Hey bag maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness and I am so excited to introduce you to Minikin Season 4. This is an exclusive bundle of 12 PDF sewing patterns and 12 videos. I sew the entire projects from start to finish on camera so it's almost like sewing along with me in your own home. In addition, the bundle includes SVG files, projector files, and AO files in case you happen to have an electric cutting machine, a home projector, or if you prefer to print your pattern pieces on large format paper at your local copy shop. So let me introduce you to all 12 projects. This is the Catalan storage cube. It comes in two different sizes. This is actually size rectangle. And the great thing about this pattern is it uses a metal frame at the top, which is inserted near the end of the project and the metal frame helps the cube hold its shape. So let me show you what the metal frames look like. So here's the metal frame for size rectangle and here's the metal frame for size square. We have both of these size frames in the shop. And let me show you what the size square looks like in the finished cube. So here's my size square. It's really cute. These cubes are great for storing on a bookcase or if you have a storage cube unit. And on the inside, I have a false bottom. I've actually used corrugated plastic for mine. So it's quite stiff. There's a little pull tab to easily get it out. And this will go in the bottom of your finished cube in order to provide some extra stability. So this is a really fun project to put together. This is the goldenrod book cover and I've actually been wanting to do a pattern for a book cover for a really long time. In my family, we're really avid readers. So on one end, there is a carry handle. Here's what the zipper looks like from the outside. And let me unzip this and show you what it looks like on the inside. I tried to grab one of my thickest books to fit on the inside. So there is a pocket on either side. In the pocket, you can either store papers or other items, or like I've done here, you can insert the front and back cover of your book um, for easy storage while you're on the go. This next project is the Enigma pouch. The Enigma pouch features a nice square profile on the side, a fun grab handle up at the top, and then here's what it looks like from the front view. So let me show you what it looks like on the inside as well. So I used a double zipper for mine, and you'll also notice there is a pull tab on either end for easy opening and closing. When the pouch is open, it actually lies flat. So this is what it looks like on the inside. There's an accordion on either side and also a zipper pocket in the center for storage of some of your smaller items. And let me just kind of tilt it to the side so you can get a, a really nice side view of this finished project. This is great for storing yarn, other handwork projects. Um, you can even put some smaller pouches on the inside for sort of a pouch within a pouch project. But again, this is the Enigma pouch. This is actually my husband Danny's favorite project out of the set of 12. This sewing pattern is the Lovegrass sewing machine cover. So throughout the years, I've received requests for a cover for various particular sewing machines. And I was always a little stumped because obviously all the different machines are different dimensions. And so this is actually a pattern where you input the measurements of your sewing machine. So the length, the height, and the depth. And in the pattern instructions, I walk you through taking those measurements and using them to cut out your pattern pieces. So you can make a cover for virtually anything, a sewing machine, a serger, a kitchen mixer, a barbecue cover, whatever you want. Um, the ideas are limitless. So there's pockets in the front. There's also mesh pockets on the side for storing things like manuals and other small items. There's a handle at the top and this is what it looks like on the inside. So the lining is um, a great red color that I used for mine and I'm just so excited to make covers for all of my machines, my serger and my cover stitch machine. And for this season of Minikins, I decided to add one bag project to the mix. So this is the partridge bag. Let me show you all of the details. So I think this is one of the bags that I've used the most snaps on. So this has several snaps. 
This front pocket with the flap unsnaps to reveal some storage space on the inside for your cell phone or other items. On the back of the project, there's also another snap and this pocket is a great size. And actually the pocket conceals a majority of the strap extenders which are attached to the D-rings. So both of these strap extenders are on the back of the bag. And on the inside, the bag has a top zip closure and it reveals two zipper pockets on the inside. So this is a really great bag for just carrying around your essentials, but yet it still has a ton of storage space. Now this quite large bag is the Oleander Yoga Bag. So I've had tons of requests for a yoga bag over the years, so I wanted to fit as many of the highly requested sewing patterns into the season of minikins as possible. So there's two front pockets on this bag. One secures with a parachute clip and actually the webbing makes this adjustable. There's a flap and kind of a large front pocket over here. This one is a flat zipper pocket. And I wanted to design a yoga bag that has easy access to the mat. So I kind of inserted a L-shaped zipper and here's how that unzips. And I've got my yoga mat on the inside and there's extra space for either a towel or a change of clothes. And it also features an adjustable strap for carrying on your back. This project is the Mist Flower Water Bottle Tote. So obviously sizes of water bottles vary. You want to take your ruler and measure your water bottle to make sure it has a diameter of three and a half inches or less. But inside the bag right now is one of our 40 ounce metal water bottles and also our 24 ounce bottles fit inside as well. So this bag features an adjustable strap and the water bottle is cinched inside the bag using a cord lock. So I've used some nylon cording or paracord um, to secure this drawstring and the, the top fabric is a ripstop fabric. I wanted to choose something that would nicely drape and accommodate the drawstring, which I think the ripstop really does. And let me show you some of the other features of the bag. So there's a front pocket. First off, there is a horizontal zipper for storage of small items, perhaps coins or keys. And this front pocket also opens to stash your cell phone or other items that you might like to have inside. And while there's no pockets on the inside, I also wanted to show you what that looked like as well. I've got the ripstop up at the top and then my lining fabric on the inside. The blue stem pouch comes in two different sizes. I used a double zipper to construct this pouch. There's also a pull tab on either end. And let me show you what it looks like on the inside. So here's the bottom, and as you can see, I've used a very small bit of fold-over elastic to finish the raw edges just on the side edge. So there's one piece of fold-over elastic on this end and another piece on the other end, and I, I think it's a great way to introduce the use of fold-over elastic to cover a seam, even though this is a small seam. But this is a great pouch for school supplies like pencils, markers, um, even for storing some of your sewing notions. This is the Calliope Jewelry Organizer. It's a zippered case with plenty of storage space for your jewelry, whether you need it traveling or you just like to keep it stored at home. So these snap tabs over here can be assembled in several different substrates. I made some with cotton fabric. Um, I tried twill tape and also with clear vinyl, and the instructions for all three are in the pattern. As you can see, it holds necklaces without getting tangled. This piece of elastic um, keeps all of the necklaces separate, and then they kind of feed into this pocket at the bottom, and there's also a second elastic pocket area. This zipper pocket over here can be moved from side to side and is great for storing some of your bracelets. I also have an earring organizer over here 
and this snap opens for you to remove and add some more earrings. This is also removable. This is restoring some of your rings and it unsnaps on either end for you to either remove rings or slide some more on. And there's a second zipper pocket at the very bottom. So for this particular project, generally I like to be considered of sewing projects right sides together, but because there's so many items coming into play in this case from the snap tabs to the earring panel to all of the pockets, I thought it would be a tighter fitting lining finished with binding. So there's one piece of binding on this half and there's one piece of binding on the other half. And even if you're not a fan of binding, I think the pattern instructions and the video, I'll walk you through every step. And I think, especially if you don't care for binding, I think you might be a little bit closer to liking it after finishing this project. The Sprinkles Baking Tote has actually four different styles of bag in the same pattern. So I wanted to come up with a project for you to carry baking dishes or casseroles to family gatherings or other events. And so I've included four different sizes for common sizes of baking dishes. And for this particular pattern, I've allowed space for things like handles or lids. So this is for a nine inch by five inch baking dish. I've also got one for a nine and a half inch round baking dish. This largest one is for a 13 by nine inch baking dish. And then I've also got one for a nine inch square baking dish. So let me show you what it looks like on the inside. So first off on the top, I have kind of a handle organizer secured with Velcro. So it keeps both of the handles, the front handle and the back handle secured. I've used a double zipper for this project. And because it's meant to store dishes, I have used insulated fleece for the lining. And I've actually quilted the insulated fleece to the wrong side of the lining fabric using machine quilting, but spaced far enough apart so that we don't have to deal with some extra shrinkage. So this is my machine quilting, which you can see uh, with the white thread. There's a couple things for this that I wanted to keep in mind for what I assume would be a heavy baking dish. So first off, on the front and the back of the bag, I've installed optional rivets, or you can also use Chicago screws. This goes through all layers of the fabric. As you can see on this side, it's gone through the lining fabric. That's for some extra security. And also at the bottom, I've finished this bag with binding only for this bottom edge and the binding through bags that I've made throughout the years, I found that certain styles of bags, when finished with binding, provide extra stability. It's almost kind of like a skeleton kind of holding up that particular area of the bag, in this case, the bottom of the bag. And so I think this is a really great, I can see this made for gifts for the holidays and even just for yourself to make a full set to carry dishes with you uh, when you go to your family gatherings. This next project is the Nuthatch Organizer, and it comes with two different versions in the same pattern. So one version holds Notions as a Notion Organizer, and the second one will store your sewing machine feet. So let me show you what they both look like on the inside. As you can see, they both have slightly different profiles from the front, and that's to accommodate all of the different um, storage space on the inside through how the project folds together. So. This is the Notion Organizer. I've used clear vinyl with zippers at the top to create three separate sections for storing your Notions. And here's what the sewing machine feet organizer looks like. So I've got some of my sewing machine feet stored. Each row has three separate compartments. And let me show you, I actually made a second set using an alternative lining fabric just so you can see a little bit better what the inside looks like. So here's my lining main panel and the white fabric. This is a single piece of fabric, the white fabric, and it kind of makes the pockets stand out a little bit better. And here's what the sewing machine feet organizer looks like on the inside. Again, these are all separate sections secured with just a single top zipper, um, but the stitching creates the different 
divisions in the pockets. And last but not least is Hildegard's Notion Trunk. I think visually this project is my favorite. I just love the fabric that I chose. I love all of the different features and it has tons of storage space. So it's got this great handle up at the top and in the front there is a mesh zipper pocket and then also storage space for things like pens, uh, colored pencils, or markers. Let me show you what it looks like on the inside as well. So again, I've used a double zipper for this project. And there's also a larger mesh zipper pocket in the lid. And in, on the inside, I've used a Velcro attached to the lining fabric as well as these fun dividers. These are removable so you can decide how many to place inside or you can change the positioning of them. And I've used mesh as well as fold over elastic to make this so that you can put larger items on the inside. Here's what the Velcro looks like on the back and through some top stitching, it kind of creates um, a bend in the divider. So this is really great to store knitting supplies, sewing notions if you're going to a sewing retreat and would like to take some of your supplies with you and you'd like to travel in class. I think Hildegard's Notion Trunk is a really great choice. Let me show you this front pocket in a closer view also. Again, here's the elastic stitch down for storage of some pens and then here is that smaller mesh zipper pocket. Each pattern includes pattern pieces for at-home printing, color photos for just about every step in the pattern, and there's also a full-length video to go along with each pattern. In the videos, I walk you through the entire process from start to finish, from cutting out the pattern pieces to attaching the interfacing and finishing the projects up until the very end. I hope you enjoyed that look at all 12 projects from Minikin Season 4. So what are you waiting for? Grab your bundle now. I can't wait to see what you make. And remember, if I can do it, so can you.